Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to be looking at remote validation in an ASP.NET Core Razor page application. Remote validation allows a server-side method to be called using a client-side library. This method can either be a page handler method in a Razor page application or an action method in an MVC application. Remote validation can be extremely useful if, for example, we are building a web application that allows users to sign up with a unique email address. In other words, new users should not be allowed to sign up with an email address that has already been used by an existing user. And if they try to do this, we want our application to display a validation error telling them that the email address is already in use. Alright, so I have a basic ASP.NET for Resolve page application. Um, I'm in the code file of the index.cshtml file. First thing I want to do here is define an on page on, on post um, handler method to handle the post request. Now what we're actually doing here is just checking if the model state is valid and if it's valid we are returning the privacy page and then if it's not valid we're just redirecting the user to the same page and displaying the model um, state errors. Now, to implement remote, um, remote validation, there are basically two things we need to do. The first thing is define a property that will actually get the um, email from the user. And I've gone ahead and done that. It's a string property with the name email and I have these three attributes on it. The bind property required an email address. Now, let's go to our index.cshtml file. I have a simple form tag here with a method of post an input element that is bounded to the email property we just defined and also a validation um, display um, a span element with the ASP.NET Core Tag Alpha validation for which is still bounding to that um, email field we just defined um, we have a, a submit button to actually submit the form so let's run it and see what we have all right so far, this is what we have. Um, the basic um, input form. Okay, that works. And if the email is wrong, it should not submit. All right, that works also. All right, the next thing we want to do is go to our code file and define a page handler method to actually compare the email the user has entered with our existing emails in the database. So let's go ahead and do that. It will be a public. Um, we can return an I action result, but let's just return the JSON result here. Um, it will have the on get page handler, and let's call this is email taken. Um, we'll be expecting a string of email. Now, by default, ASP.NET Core will bind this email parameter here with this email property we have here. That's why we have the bind property there. Alright, let's go ahead and return the JSON result. Don't worry about the code, I will explain that later. Um, let's return true. We actually need the new keyword to do this here. Alright, now we actually need some kind of um, data source to work with here. And since I don't have the database with this application, I'll just define a string variable with the name emails. Because to a string array sorry a string array um let's just write in some basic emails here then do at email.com and let's have then at email.com and we can also have another one let's say serial as all right now that we have that let's go ahead and write an if statement that will actually check these emails to know if the email provided by the user has been used by another user so let's use the contain method and pass in the email we are getting here now if this email has been taken we want to go ahead and return um return a new json result of will be returning false yeah all right to explain this code what we basically have here some kind of data source that we are using and then 
And if statements that loops through all this record to know if the email that the user has provided has been used. And if the email has been used, set the validation to false, meaning not um not allowed. And then if the email has not been used, set it to true, meaning allow the user to use that particular email. Now, what we need next is a way to bind this um page handler to the email property we've defined and to do that we'll be using the page remote property i'm sorry page remote attributes if you're doing this in um asp.net core and if you're doing this in an mvc project you can just use the remote um attributes directly but for razor page we have to use the page remote attribute now there are just three basic um parameters we have to pass in here the first one is the the first one is the page handler that is the name of the handler the um that we are binding to and here yeah, is this is email taking so let's go ahead and write page handler here yeah, and set it to this is email the next one is actually is the http method type in this case it's a get so we write http method and um, we are Connecting to a get now, then what error message do we want to display when this um validation fails? So we use the error message and pass in email is already in use. All right, now remote page validation actually works asynchronously, and to do this, ASP.NET Core makes use of um three jQuery files. And um, to actually get those files, you can go to the www directory inside the library folder. The first file is the jQuery file itself, which is the jQuery.js, then the jQuery.validate, and also the jQuery.validate.onofTrueSave. Now, these three files should be available when you create a new ASP.NET Core Resolve page application. But if for some reason they are not, you can either decide to download them online or you can download them using this option here. You can go to Hard, then Client Side Library. Type in the name of the Client Side Library here. It will pop up, select them, and then install them. I already have them, so I'm not going to do that. Now, I'll go ahead and go to the layout file and drag these three files to link them to it. We already have the jQuery file um, referenced already. So let's just add this and this to it. Make sure you add them in this order. All right, let's save this, run the code and see what we have. All right, so I'll enter an email that has been used. Let me check one of those emails. We have um, jungle at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and enter that and try to submit. Now we get this validation error email has been used. Actually, we don't even have to submit. Let me use another email that has been taken. Once you click out, you get the validation error email is already in use. Let's go ahead and use an email that has not been used and see what we get. The submit is successful. The other thing we can do is instead of displaying this static um, message, we can actually try to make it dynamic. To do that, let's go back to our code file and instead of displaying this error message here, yeah, let's take it off. Get rid of that there. And in our uh, um is email taking page handler where we are returning first let's go ahead and return a string um we want to return this email i'm using the string interpolation method i um, want to return that email is already in use Alright, this should fix it and give us that dynamic email we want. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. Now, if I enter an email that has been used, click out, you see the dynamic message. So, here you have it. That's how you implement remote page validation in ASP.NET Core Resolve Page. Thank you.